Hello and welcome. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to take you through what's new in Photoshop on the iPad in the Max 2020 release. Now, I have a couple tasks to do. I need to show you what's new, but I also need to show you some things that are new-ish. In other words, that were released since the last time I showed you Photoshop on the iPad. So I'll point the differences out between them. So some things you already had as of like the June update, and then of course a couple things that are new as of this update, but all together you've got all these things available to you today. So let's go ahead and dive in. I've got my iPad Pro here ready to go. I'm just gonna go ahead and take my Apple Pencil off the top here. I'm gonna go ahead and launch into Photoshop where I've got a document open and ready to go. Now, in this particular case, uh, one of the things that I'm gonna show you that is brand new in the Max release is the ability to live stream directly from Photoshop. So if you go to your share menu, uh, you will see now you have, a, you have the publish and export, you have the quick export, now you have a third category, which is live stream. So if I go ahead and, and tap on that, um, it brings up the ability to use my camera. It brings up the ability to title my stream. I can go ahead and tap next. And I, if I were to want to start my broadcast on Behance right now, I can go ahead and start it and it will stream not only my voice, my camera, but also me working in Photoshop on the iPad. So that's pretty cool and brand new as of the max release. All right, now let's go ahead and dive into a couple of things that um, were in the recent releases. Uh, that aren't necessarily new as of today. So to, to do this, I, want, I need to work on my scene. It's almost finished. As you can see, we have a rhino that needs to be cut out and I need to bring in my hero image. But let's go ahead and first turn off some of the distracting layers. I'm gonna turn off this layer group of the title and the uh, some of the animals behind the rhino. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tap on the rhino layer and, and just pinch and zoom in so we can get to it. Now, first and foremost, I need to select the rhino and cut it out. I got a couple ways to make selections now that are new, newish. <laughs> so first and foremost is we brought over the object selection tool uh, from Photoshop on the desktop. So if I tap on this tool, I get to use it as a rectangle or as an ellipse. So I can just use it as a rectangle or I'm sorry, not as ellipse, but as a lasso. And uh, I can use it either way. So I'm, I switched it to lasso and I can go ahead and just lasso my way around the rhino's head. Make sure we get the rhino uh, layer selected there. There we go. And now we uh, go ahead and there we go. Lasso around the rhino's head and it will make that selection based on what it thought the object was. So object selection, just like we do in Photoshop on the desktop, uh, now works in Photoshop on the iPad. And you can use it either as a rectangle and a lasso. So that's one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and deselect. And number two, which is my favorite way to make selections, and that's using select subject, where Adobe Sensei figures out what the subject is and makes that selection accordingly. So I'm on the Rhino layer, I tap select subject, and it figures out that the Rhino is the subject and makes that selection. So I can go ahead and just tap mask, and it will mask it out and give me that Rhino selection uh, that I need as a cutout. And of course, it's a mask, so I can go in and refine anything that might've gotten missed. I see a little grass down there by his foot, and I could go ahead and fix all that, but some of that's gonna get covered up anyway, so I'm not gonna worry about it. But you've got that mask layer uh, that you can go on and switch between and work on anytime you want. Next up, let's go ahead and turn on our hero image, which is the lion. And we'll turn our lion on, and the same thing. I need to select the lion, I need to cut it out from the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna do a select subject. And when I do that select subject, it figures out what the lion is, even though it didn't really get everything I wanted, but it got what I needed for the most part. And the problem with select subject is that it has always been based on hard edges. In this case, we've got fur, we've got hair, we've got a mane to worry about. So that brings me to my next favorite feature, and that is the ability, even with um, a sub subject like this, just like I would do on the desktop, I can go into a refine edge mode, just like in select and mask. So if I tap refine edge, that will show me the marching ass, but that really won't tell me what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch the viewing to black and white so we can really see that mask and see what it looks like. Now I can see how hard edge that is and it's not gonna be what I want. So first and foremost, I'm just gonna turn on a little smart radius and edge detection and it will start to bring out that detail just by turning that on. So it's already starting to give me what I want. But I'm gonna go into the Refine Edge brush. Let's go ahead and increase the size of that. We'll bring that up to around the 70s, somewhere in there, get a nice big brush. 
And now I'm going to go in and start brushing along the edge of the mane. And you can start to see that hair and that fur come in as, as, as detailed as possible. Look at that. Just amazing that it does, oh, it pops right in. All right, so next up, I'm just going to shift the edge over a little bit just to get rid of any extraneous pixels that I may have selected. And we're going to go ahead and output that as a new layer with a mask. So I'm going to not mess with my original layer. I'm just going to go ahead and output that as a new layer with a mask, and away we go. And it's perfectly cut out. So now compositing on your desktop is a real capable, I'm sorry, on your iPad is a real capability, just like on a desktop, using select subject, object selection tool, and um, the refined edge capabilities uh, now on the iPad. Now, keep in mind, that also gave me a new layer with a mask. And if I wanted to, I could go in with my paintbrush, and if there were any edges that I need to paint out, I can go ahead and paint those out with a paintbrush. And this is just the reason I'm showing this is it gives me a capability or the reason to show you another new feature, kind of hidden, but you have the ability, I'm going to take two fingers, and you can rotate the canvas. So if you need to brush at a specific angle, you can rotate the canvas without necessarily rotating the image to get that angle. Now, last but not least, while we're on that layer of the lion, I'll switch from the mask back to the layer, we're going to go in and we're going to do one more thing. We're going to go ahead and add a adjustment layer to kind of make it tone like the rest of the scene. So to do that, I'm just going to go and add in a clipped adjustment, and we'll use our curves adjustment, which is also fairly new in Photoshop on the iPad. So I can go in and I can just really crank up the contrast here by bumping up those shadows, bringing down those midtones and highlights just a bit, and kind of giving that high contrast look like the rest of the scene professionally and non-destructively using the curves adjustment here on Photoshop on the iPad. Now, uh, before we turn off the or, or turn back on the scene, so we did a new feature, which was the live streaming. Our next new feature is the ability to go in and do uh, image sizing. So um, not all images come in at the exact size you need them to be. So now you can image size, go to image size just like you would on a desktop. You can choose pixels, you can choose inches, you can choose whatever you want, and change the size of your image down to what you need to output. So image size brand new in the max release. All right, and also, of course, the live streaming. Next up, and let's uh, go ahead and turn back on some layers here. Let's get out, let's, uh, get out of the image size properties there. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and turn back on that uh, layer that we had on before. There we go. And turn back on those other animals. And that's what I meant by the rhino, even though the feet weren't quite perfect, I got what I needed because I was able to just simply cover the up those areas. Uh, that I knew would be covered anyway. All right, last but not least, if I were to now close this document or go back to my home screen, it will sync as it always had as a uh, cloud document and therefore be available to me on Photoshop on the desktop or my other iPad or wherever I'm running Photoshop. So with that said, those are a few of my favorite new features in Photoshop across versions, including the new features here in the Max release. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody.